Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm going to speak about today uh, STEM Inc. and purchasing piezo ceramics from this company. Uh, my name is Hussein Shikani. I'm the founder lead consultant of my company, Ultrasonic Advisors. No relation to this company, uh, but this uh, STEM Inc. has been a really important resource uh, for many piezo development projects for one specific reason, and that is you can actually purchase uh, piezo ceramics like this disc here that I'm showing just by adding to your cart and kind of sending it and it's um it's uh, basically comes ships from the US so it's a very easy way to attain piezo ceramics uh, and ultrasonic transducers uh, but um, my goal here today is going to talk about how do you purchase ceramics from them in terms of how do you select which product is going to be best for your specific application um, so in the beginning, when we start off, when we start off designing an ultrasonic transducer, um, we either we do that with finite element analysis, like you design your device and what you want it to do. And, and hey, I'm an ultrasonic transducer simulation consultant. So if you need help starting, um, I, I'd be a good person to contact, but you already have, let's say you already have a device, you've already designed it, or you're copying a design that's already existing, you need to attain those piezo ceramics. So the first question is you need to ask what type of application do I have? Right, you need to ask what type of application? And let me just uh, work here. Um, so what kind of application? Let's see if I can. And you can have either a, you know, a high power piezo application, you can have two an actuator, or sensor, or the third is that you can have an energy harvesting, which are more rare, uh, but uh, there are some folks wanting energy harvesting applications. So you ask yourself, which one of those three devices or, or types of devices do I need? Uh, but I think even before that, um, you're gonna want to know, um, well, what shape of the ceramic and let's say we're buying our ceramics from this this company uh and you have to figure out your shape and that's probably something that you can easily answer so let's say we're doing a bolt clamp transducer almost like this one almost like these here um but you are actually wanting to build that yourself so you're gonna you want a piezo ceramic ring so you know that for your bolt clamp transducer so back to your question here for these transducers are specifically going to be high power uh, ultrasonic devices you need. Um, and what you're going to need for those devices are low loss and you need, high, you know, basically high quality factor is going to be the main uh, parameter. So, you know, firstly, what you're going to do, you, you let's say you, you can basically back calculate or estimate what kind of size ceramic you, you need. You've either done that in simulation or you've done that um, uh, uh, through another means through measurements of an existing device. And let's say you wanted a ceramic ring uh, about this size, let's say 15 by 6.5 millimeters, like the inner diameter by five millimeter thickness. So how do you understand all these properties of this device? So is this gonna be good for me? Um, basically, I'm gonna answer that. So you basically, here's a number in stock in case you're curious, uh, here is the, you know, the cost for two, a set of two. So if you have four ceramics, you're going to have to order two, you know, add quantity two. Um, and I'll start to talk a little bit about what, uh, what all these frequencies and all these numbers mean. So it says 410 kilohertz. Okay. Whenever you see any number in kilohertz, uh, that usually means more than a resonance at a distance um, uh, like 10 millimeters or more uh, usually typically so in this case this 15 millimeter diameter here is going to be actually it might be the thickness uh resonant frequency yes ha 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 my mistake here uh so um you, you kind of have to read you, the the resonant frequency is probably going to be lower uh so this is in the thickness direction of resonance it's going to be 410 kilohertz so that is the thickness direction uh of your ceramic ring and i do have a ceramic ring around here somewhere um but usually it takes me a while to find it um it's so like a ceramic ring it's it's going to be thickness resonance uh so that tells you 
what the pre frequency of the ceramic itself resonates at, it's not it's it's more of like a test that you received your device you can test it that it matches but it's this 410 kilohertz is not really relevant for your bolt clamp transducer uh, it's kind of just a specification of the crystal itself um this is a piezo ceramic ring with electrodes on both sides um that is good um that's what you need uh the electrode configuration is important now let's look at the piezo material sm118 so it takes us to this uh, uh, website, SMPZT8. Uh, so there's a couple of type of PZTs as you see kind of mentioned here up top. Um, the ones that are used in high power applications are um, PZT4 and PZT8, which are also called Navy Type 1 and Navy type two. Um, Navy type three and PZT5 are also our are, are sensor. Uh, so um, here we have uh, SM118. So that's PZT type eight. That's a high power transducer. How do I know? And there's all these numbers here. It's so confusing. But we know because this quality factor. This means that it's the inverse of the loss. And you can see how widely these vary. Um, let me kind of zoom in a little bit. Uh, so you can see this this material is 60 and the material that, that, that we're actually taking a look at, actually, sorry, Navy type three, uh, I think Navy, anyways. Um, so uh, I think that could be an error, um, who knows? Not important. But the important thing here is that the mechanical quality factor that this should be navy type two. Um, uh, the mechanical quality factor is um, 1200. So that's 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 a high quality factor, uh, which is also going to mean that the losses are low. Um, here's a Curie temperature. Basically, you, you don't use your ceramic above this temperature uh, or close to it. And um, So you don't use your your, your uh, material close to that ceramic. Um, I have other videos regarding frequency constants, and I'll I'll try to link that in the the notes. I'm gonna write that down. Make sure I go with the frequency constants. Um, I have a video explaining what those are. But basically, if you're going to be using your if you have a ceramic disc, a solid disc, or a solid bar, it'll help you determine the frequency of that if it's especially important for your application. Um, but this is the main parameter here uh, that you need to look at for um, for your high power. So this is this will work well as a high power material. Um, this permittivity is going to determine your off resonance capacitance. Uh, but really, this this value here tells you it's good for high power applications. And you know, I'm going to I'm going to uh, venture to say I'm pretty, pretty confident if I, when I say that all of these materials are going to be a high power class. So let's just take a look at another one. Um, if you see here, um, this also measured this. This one is smaller. That this one's 10, 10 uh, uh, millimeters diameter, but it's 155 kilohertz. That doesn't make any sense, apparently, right? Because it's smaller diameter and it's a smaller piezo. It's even thinner, but it's a lower frequency. No, because it's a it's a di, you know diameter, it's a resonant mode of the uh, of the of the diameter, not of the thickness. The resonant mode of the thickness is hundreds of kilohertz. The resonant mode of the radial direction is going to be lower. That's why you can kind of get that from. Um, and this is SM one 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 one. So this is just material here. Uh, this is also a high mechanical quality factor, even higher than the previous one. Um, these materials, you may say that this material is kind of superior in every way to PZT8 as shown here, because it has a higher quality factor and a higher uh, charge coefficient uh, and larger coupling factors too. So it's kind of superior in, in all ways, but when you're developing prototypes, uh, these differences won't make or break your device. It'll just cause it to operate in a slightly different space. Um, so I would, kind of recommend um, you you 
can purchase what's necessary. This half moon electrode, uh, I, I believe it's believed to cause some stability uh, for s specific applications. I'm not really familiar when you actually have to use a, as a quarter electrodes. I've seen it use it at times. Uh, it just uh, um, kind of depends, I guess the best answer I could give right now. Um, and you see there's a lot of other different designs. So how do you purchase? So all these rings are going to be high power rings because there's no sensor rings. Langevin transducers are not used in sensor applications. So I doubt that any of these, like this is a 111 again. That's a, uh, so all these ceramics are going to be high power because rings are used in bolt clamp transducers. Um, so what I would do basically is you get a general idea of what you want. Let's say if either if you're reverse engineering your transducer or you've designed one, if you're designing one, you and you have a general idea of what size you want. It's best to start with the design of a of a ceramic that actually exists. So, you know, if you have your device, you know, you may have 30 millimeters diameter. Like I'm, I'm talking about this specific device here. Let's say, let's say if you had, if you, if you wanted a device that had 30 millimeters diameter and 10 millimeters um, inner diameter, um, then what would you do? Well, you would, uh, you would just change your simulation parameters to these ones because you want to, you want to design a device based on ceramics you can actually buy in, in short order because it's nice to have constraints. So that's kind of the nice thing about buying something that already exists is that there are constraints and you can kind of stick to them. Other, other ceramic suppliers uh, are more built to order. Uh, they don't have specific sizes of ceramics in stock. Um, this makes it convenient both to purchase and receive. And also um, this, uh, I, you know, I've, I've seen uh, projects where um, larger quantities of ceramics are supplied uh, based on ordering and um, that has worked completely fine. So any of these rings will work great. And this is what the frequency means. Obviously this is 190 kilohertz. Um, you, you can read on here, this is, this is from the thickness mode and it's uh, six millimeters uh, thickness. Um, and, um, I, and, and so here are things you can test, like the, like the static capacitance. You can test the capacitance um, to make sure you're getting the right product. You can also ensure that if you get a ceramic, this is one ceramic 118, um, which is also, which is that same PCT8 material. Um, you can test the dielectric loss factor here with an LCR meter. You can easily test the dielectric loss factor. You can test for the capacitance, which, which from a parallel plate capacitor standpoint, you can determine the permittivity. Um, the other factors do require more uh, specific equipment for piezo ceramics, like a impedance analyzer uh, to do that measurement uh, of these uh, and, and back calculate, which I, which I might show in a, in a future video. Um, so that's how you would purchase ceramics from here. If you know, obviously if there's only 11 available in stock, you may not want to choose that one. You would like to choose, a, if you had a choice, You'd like to choose a design. Now these are, that have a huge hole in the center. Um, I um, these are seemingly like some of them are uh, you know noting that they are um, sensors. I you can use these products as sensors uh, rings, but this huge ring, huge centering. I don't think there's really a uh, a need for most applications. I'm not familiar with the application specifically that requires such a large ID because the larger ID you have, the less piezo material you have. The less piezo material you have, the less force you're going to be able to generate for a given voltage, um, or, or less effective force over the area. Um, so that is how I person. They usually come in pairs. Um, so that is how I, I would purchase ceramic from from this company. And um, they have polarizations marked by dots, um, which is good. They have basic components here. Um, they have uh, fired on um, silver electrode, which is basically the standard uh, type. So all these are pretty much standard um, electrodes that will be you'll be able to solder onto them. Uh, and that's how I would go ahead. And this is kind of a more kind of a strange, strange suit, Teflon coated PZT ring. Uh, it's probably, it probably wants to be used as a atomizer. That's why you would Teflon coat it. Um, but there's the PZT ring. So let's go to the disc. Um, so let's go ahead and go and talk about, you know, purchasing the shape. So, so we talked about the ring 
And I think for the ring, they're all going to be high power, which is you want a higher quality factor. Now for a disc, um, you either want an actuator, and depending on what you want. If you want a pure actuator, meaning lower frequency, this is like usually not resonance. Uh, or if you want a sensor, the parameter that you are, are going to optimize and prefer is the D33 coefficient. Uh, and let's take a look there. So again, you'll need to know your basic size of your device, either if you're copying a device or you don't, or you're designing one, you might want a simulation expert like myself to help you out there. Uh, but um, you have, like, let's just choose this one. So this is a ceramic of five millimeter diameter, 1.5 millimeter uh, thickness. This five millimeter is going to be the resonant frequency of 370 kilohertz. Again, radial, not thickness. Thickness would be in this case in the megahertz. Um, so yes, it isn't, it isn't mentioned specifically, but it's it mentions radial mode. And you know, it's, it's interesting sometimes on this website, they'll have very similar thing. And they'll say, they'll give like something megahertz. Let's say it's like two megahertz and it'll write thickness application, but it's the same exact kind of looking product. Any ring or any disc can be used thickness or radial or, or planar as they call it. They don't call it radial, it's planar resonance when it's going in the plane. Um, so um, that is, um, it, that, that's something to note. So this is material S5, SM517. Let's take a look at that. Let me zoom out. Um, Okay, let's see here. SM517. I don't think that's here. And that's kind of strange. Let's just choose another material. Um, SM311. Okay, here's SM301 PZT5H. Um, as you're going to see, five PZT five is a de designation for uh, an actuator. So here, this is des designation for an actuator is PZT five. Or, oh, shoot, navy. I think it's navy type. I think I messed up that navy des designation. I think this is type three. Uh, actuators are type two, I believe. Anyways, it happens. Well, it shouldn't happen to me. I'm supposed to be an expert, but well, I'm live. So Navy type two. Um, and the way, I, yeah, I have a fun way of remembering these Navy types, which I apparently forgot, <laughs> which is why I kind of forgot that there. So anyways, actually it's Navy type. Yeah, Navy type, sorry, Navy type four. four. Anyways, um, basically it's 5H. This designation is, yeah, here we go. PZT 5A is Navy type two. And um Besides that fact, it's kind of confusing sometimes, even for folks like me. So this charge coefficient is 600 and versus the 300 range that is typical of these high quality factor uh, piezo ceramics. So you'll find for all the five types that the that the that the uh, the quality factor is very high. I'm sorry, the the constant charge constant is very high. If you wanted to optimize this specifically for a um, Actuator application, you want the highest D33 coefficient, which is 600, uh, and this is actually 2 on 1 is the highest at 650. Um, There's not, you know, if you chose this ceramic over the other one, over this one, then you'd have a lower voltage, or, or you had lower displacement for a given voltage. It's not to say you can provide more voltage and get the same uh, displacement uh, as well, but it's a general class of material. So right, when you're doing a prototype, you want the right class of material, which exact one at this point is not important. You're trying to prove out your process, you prove out your process, prove out your specific application. The, you know, the fact that they don't have six, you know, PZ, you know, SM211, which has the highest D coefficient, for your application that's not important as long as you choose an actuator type for your uh, application that's cool. You'll see here the mechanical quality factors are relatively low for these uh, materials. You'll also notice that the piezo ceramic of you know the five type, uh, the actuator type that has lowest D coefficient also has a little bit higher um, quality factor. Um, you'll also see here regarding energy harvesting or or actually regarding your uh, your sensor piezo sensor 
properties, you'll look at the G coefficient, which is the which is going to relate your voltage that you generate. Uh, you're going to see here also that this material, although it has a lower uh, charge coefficient than the others, than the other in, in the five class, uh, you'll also see that it has a higher G coefficient, slightly higher, uh, as, uh, which would be meaning that it's it has lower permittivity. So it's going to take less current to drive it relatively because when you're driving a piezo ceramic you're driving it's like dead capacitance and you're also driving the actuator property which behaves like a capacitor as well so this is huge dead capacitance uh, you, you want to minimize that because it doesn't really provide much results in terms of actuation uh, but uh, there's this always that trade-off but for your specific like testing out your concept idea um, that's not important when you really want to optimize your drive circuit and your entire system you may say hey we we proved out this concept very well using pzt 5h but now we want lower current uh, and so we're going with pzt 5a uh, sm412 so it's 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 more important to get the proper size and frequency if that's important for your application uh, and you have things like here you have your static capacitance uh, and you have your coupling factor, the resonant frequency, which is going to be the diameter here. Um, so I, I have, you know, been on projects uh, where piezoceramic discs were purchased, where uh, rings were purchased and cylinders and all of those, you know, projects had good results. The, 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 the properties of the ceramics were as promised. Uh, so um, you may not get a a ceramic exactly with these properties when you order because piezo ceramics have variability so these are more guidelines rather than um hard numbers but you will get the right class of material like if you um that's what actually is going to be the important factor and this is true for any ceramic supplier not just this one um i i haven't you know, i wouldn't say that oh just because it seems like it's an easy online buy it's probably lower quality than going directly to a supplier themselves um because uh, this company i believe is not a direct supplier they're more of a, a, a third party vendor uh they're a vendor so it's not any lower uh quality um, there's different electrode patterns. So if you're gluing your ceramic onto a surface and you're not going to have access to put to, to provide voltage to the other side, you'll, um, as you kind of see here, you'll bond this flat side with only one electrode and this electrode that kind of loops around and you'll bond two wires here. And I think they have a different picture here. Like here's a good picture of how it's actually soldering. So. I would actually also recommend that you buy you buy the ceramics if you're going to buy this case and you're not that experienced buy them with the wires attached because it's kind of annoying uh, or buy extra ceramics if you want to learn how to solder them um i i rec in order to solder them i recommend like doing a little bit of sandpaper uh washing that sandpaper off putting like flux through a pen and then putting a little dab of solder this is kind of a beginner's way of doing it putting a little dab of solder on the on the surface and obviously tin your wires and then make a quick connection you don't want to leave your, your the, the uh, hot iron on your ceramic for very long at all um in order to provide good results and there's different sizes here as well um this is a six millimeter diameter disc I think it's six millimeter thickness. Oh no, six millimeter diameter, one millimeter thickness, uh, two megahertz. Um, what I'm looking for here is there's different, um, different sizes. Like this is a 10 millimeter diameter with 212 kilohertz. Um, and you and you saw here how there's 80 in stock. Uh, you when you buy ceramics for your project, you should buy a lot in terms of three or four times the quantity you'll need for the next few months. So like if I was building a transducer with this values, I might buy 30. There's two in stock. So at least I'll buy 15 sets. So I have a lot. Um, I have a lot of ceramics uh, to use. Uh, it's you obviously don't run through ceramics like like chips or like 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 a toilet paper or something uh you don't keep building devices that quickly but um 
that's that's the example uh, there that you do want to buy a decent amount because you don't want to you don't want to run out or be that thing that you have to wait for because they're not that expensive. They're not more expensive than your time. They're many times piezo ceramics aren't more expensive than the other products at your company. I mean that you that you use to develop these uh, um, ultrasonic transducers. So again, we got the frequency, we got the material type, and we do have like well, this is a a lot of these are sensors like the five. There's sensor materials I'll look for. And you can see here, like at the last digits, they usually tell you the material type, but not always. Um, material type is sometimes, it's not true. So this is, this is the hard, this is the SM111, which has a high quality factor. So in the disc shape, they will have actuators and they will also have um, uh, ceramics, which can be used as resonance actuators, higher power, which means resonance actuators. And for energy harvesting and sensing, um, you can also use the uh, um, the G coefficient to guide your selection. Next, we'll go with piezo plates. Um, piezo plates are nice because they can be diced. So let me, let's go back to that PowerPoint and let's now um, Let's not talk about plates. Plates are usually square or rectangular and very thin. That's how they typically are. And they have electrodes on top and electrodes on bottom. Um, and they can be diced to size, which is nice you, because all these are the rings and discs are the size that they are. You cannot machine them. but Often, I have been on projects that we, we bought some of these ceramics and they cut them to smaller sizes. Or sometimes you want to experiment, like you're doing prototyping. You want to experiment with different sizes. You have access to a dicing blade. Wafer dicing blades are great for this type of work. Um, even being careful, I don't think snapping, I've never been successful or tried snapping or recommend it, but you, you can dice these ceramics to whatever size you need for your application that you're developing. Um, Again, all these frequencies relate to your ceramic itself. It doesn't mean that it's going to operate that same frequency. It means you have you have no guarantee at all that's going to op operate that frequency when you attach it and bond it to whatever structure you're trying to excite, because now the entire structure will play into the frequency. And uh, in order to understand how that's all going to work, you would you would work with simulations in order to determine whether that is going to be a viable product and it's going to produce the frequency you're after to produce the physical effect that you're looking for. Um, so all these frequencies relate to the products themselves. Uh, sometimes the product is used not attached. In that case, the piezoceramic would resonate at that frequency. Let's just choose this one. So this again is a wraparound electrode. If you bonded this back face to a surface, you could attach electrodes here and here or attach wires here and there and be able to drive. This is SM111, um, a thickness one application, and it gives some applications here. Um, nano positioning, optics, those are just kind of general. Uh, but this 2.1, Millimeters is going to relate to this one megahertz um, uh, coupling, uh, one megahertz resonance. Um, but if you bond it, all bits are off. Now the boundary conditions of the resonator are different. You will not have a one megahertz uh, resonance. Um, so they're all different sizes. This one kind of gives it away. Energy harvesting piezo gold plated. Um, this is this is ceramic with I think it's a wraparound electrode too. Um, I want to say oh this is a polling so the this and so the, usually the polling direction you got to be careful here usually the polling direction is um, is through the thickness. In this case, the polling direction is along the length. This is a shear mode device. The polling mode is not. Um, it's a, it's kind of length, this is lengthwise, um, resonance. It looks like a shear based on how it's pulled. So you gotta make sure the pulling for almost all applications, pulling should be through the thickness, uh, like they'll mention for, let's go with here. And there usually is a, uh, there usually will be a description of what, uh, so you check this project with the product with more and different width. Um, 
This is width mode. This is the this is the length. I believe 26 kilohertz, 26 millimeters will be this 108 kilohertz there. And make sure try try to ensure. I think for all these products, to, it's pretty standard for it to be, uh, you know, thickness pulled. Um. Yeah, thickness mode vibration, but that one was an oddball here, this guy, where it actually was not a thickness pulled. Um, so I would, I would see piezo ceramic on both sides. Um, uh, I would definitely, I would actually go out and ask them whether this is thickness pulled. Um, or how this is actually both electrodes on one side. Anyways, I won't cure my curiosity. This will probably be an oddball for most applications. Most ones you'll probably buy one of these discs and have specific experience where we had actually uh, um, where we actually dice it after we receive these these uh sorry these plates. Okay, I'll go back to the main website. Um, so there's also piezo blocks, cylinders. Um, sometimes things are bonded inside of the cylinder for for you to use. Um, and I'll just give a peek at that. Now with cylinders, uh, the the pulling the pulling direction is 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 radial. So there's electrodes on the interior and exterior. So if you so if you excite, it's naturally going to expand that ring as a primary direction of resonance uh, of, of excitation. Whereas if you had the P as a ring. Um, the pulling direction is in the thickness. So the thickness is the primary direction. Um, of resonance and these again these frequencies relate to probably this radial uh circum circumfer circumferential mode vibration and it has the material type here here this is 410 uh, and this is an actuator type 410 has a higher d33 coefficient is of the pzt navy type 5 or pzt type 5 and there's a mechanical college factor which is lower uh which is consistent with that uh, actuator Let's go here. There's also some solid cylinders I see here too. Uh, there's some with different electrodes. Like if you want to actuate one part versus another, depending on your application, um, I'm, uh, sometimes it's you. It says uh, underwater communication hydrophone. I don't have a lot of experience with that, but uh, you can. Uh, but different electrode patterns can be used for different applications. So they do have those available in case they're important to you. Um, and this is, yeah, the striped electrodes, there's one with already wires there. Um, and that's that. So if you want a resonator, you'll look again for high quality factor, SM111 type, or and not low, usually have a lower D33 coefficient. Um, but if you're looking for an actuator, a higher D33 coefficient, um, and also look at the G coefficient if you have a sensor or a harvester. Um, piezo unomorphs are piezos already bonded to a um, to a metal diaphragm, which then they bend, and bending causes them to have lower resonance frequencies. So they're um, uh, so they have lower frequencies because they're 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 benders. Um, it says radial here, um, but uh, they're they're bending in terms of you being a unomorph because they're not. Now they are have some asymmetry in terms of the excitation of the piezo and this this. Uh, and this lower surface, which when the piezo expands, then it's going to want to, um, when the piezo contracts, then it's going to expand upwards. Um, so basically that uh, is there. There's also these other bending trap transducers, which have um, piezos on both sides of a metal diaphragm, which then actuating, um, we can just take a look if they have a thing here. Um, so they didn't, they didn't say how they electroded it, but usually there's a common terminal in the center and there are uh, actuation terminals on top and bottom, as you see here. Um, let's see if they give a bigger picture. Okay, not related content. Okay, that's not, that's not native. I'm using Microsoft Edge. Um, all right.
so this is what we use to bend. They have, usually have three terminals, um, w one for each side of the ceramic and one w one common terminal. Um, you'd have to know the polling direction in order to determine that. So this says the polling the polling direction um, that you keep this at zero, um, and you can vary the voltage. Uh, and you'll uh, able you'll able to get displacement, and it has three terminals. And depending on your uh, um, your term, you know how you set up your terminals there, you'll you'll be able to have. Uh, I mean, how you apply voltage, you'll be, you'll be you'll be able to have bending. Okay, some annoying things happening there. Stack actuators. Um, stack, stack actuators are for low voltage but large displacement because usually PAs will only displace nanometers or even less under, under tens or even hundreds of volts. Uh, so in order to increase the uh, uh, increase the displacement, multiple multiple layers of ceramics are put in uh, in order for you to actually apply voltage small voltage but get a high electric field these are used for uh, low frequency applications you do not use these at residence where you have a large amount of stress uh, distribution um, you use them for low frequency applications you can get up to 18 microns of displacement which is huge for for a piezo ceramic at 150 volts whereas for probably a, a solid ceramic like this you would get something like nanometers or or, or so so it's, it's a huge amount but you, you have to be careful applying only positive voltage um, there and they they come in kind of a variety of sizes through holes. Usually they're all soldered uh, in a stack ring, whichever whichever works best. Um, bolt clamp Langevin transducers. Um, they already obviously come pre-assembled. Um, many are for ultrasonic cleaning. Uh, some are advertised here for welding. Um, they're all of higher quality factor. Usually. Um, the lower the lower frequency the higher power you'll be able to achieve uh you, you'll be able to deliver uh but higher frequent but the frequency kind of depends on what your application need is the, typically the larger the size of the ceramics the lower the frequency and uh, those two things usually relate to a higher power whenever you're going to higher frequency you usually are able to produce lower you're, you're not able to have uh, to reach a certain amount of power so the larger ceramic size, and typically that means the larger the transducer, the more power you'll be able to uh, use, the larger ceramic volume. Um, ultrasonic generators. Um, I don't have experience with what they're using here, uh, but um, yeah, for those ceramic transducers, you'll be able to use these generators in order to power them, obviously. Um, and um, that's what I'll, I guess what I'll say about about that. Uh, you can some for some of them you can hook up multiple transducers. Uh, others are meant for one. Um, air transducers. Um, they are more finished, you know, a finished product. Um, there's different frequencies, receivers, and transmitters, uh, and they kind of come in a variety of different shapes. You can just take a look at this um, and see if it'll kind of fit basically for your application. Um, it, the frequency is going to determine how how you know the um, uh, some some of the properties for how the ultrasonic wave is generated, uh, how narrow the band is, as well as how sensitive it will be to. Um, the wavelength will be smaller as you increase your frequency uh, so you'll be able to detect a little more finely it, it also changes your um, and gives you a more narrow um, focus for your transducer so you'll be looking more in front of it uh, than a lower frequency uh, we have transformers uh, which is which is another finished product you put one voltage in you get a higher voltage out or a lower voltage out step up or step down transformer uh here i don't think they're all step up and you have the frequencies and the wattage um there are ac ac products so you'll need to provide a means of getting ac to them and a means of taking that ac output and bringing it back down single layer transformers which are more simple um these are multi-layer transformers which have 
a higher capability of changing voltage, uh, but are per, per, I think they're less efficient. Piezoid diaphragms, these are unimorphs, um, and they have these frequencies. Um, piezo massage, I haven't used this, <laughs> but these are kind of finished devices. Mist generators, um, the high frequency mist generators are submerged. The lower frequency ones are mesh, like this, like this um, 2.5 megahertz mist. I don't know about that. I haven't seen, I haven't used a high frequency mesh atomizer. I've seen, I've used these ones before where they're usually lower than 300 kilohertz and there's a mesh here and you provide uh, water at the bottom and it kind of, uh, it is ejected out. Um, that's what I've used. I haven't used high frequency mesh, but I've you, you have seen high frequency submerged. Um, I think these might be submerged as well. I'm not sure. Oh, this says miss, not mesh. Yeah, it's it's a high frequency. It's it's submerged. Um, Micro pores. Um, so this is a whole, kind of a lot, and, and then basically the the pore size is going to determine the droplet size. A uh, multi-layer piezo speaker, low frequency operation. Piezos are not only ultrasonic, they are also low frequency uh, in terms of actuators, which is basically what a speaker is. Um, piezo fan, that's kind of like a, a unimorph or a bimorph. Piezo flow sensor um, detects a speed. Um, well, it's an ultrasonic flow sensor, as, as it's mentioned. Um, it's a finished product as well. Piezo capacitor. Not really too familiar with the use of a piezo as a capacitor, uh, but they are capacitors. And let's see what they even have to say about it. Digital point pen feedback. Um, not not very sure about about this application. Hemispheres um, detects vortices like me measurements. Some are atomizer types, um, but I, it's mainly for focusing energy. Um, surface acoustic waves. Um, these are pulled in the length direction. Pulling in the length direction causes shear instead of expansion. It'll cause sh shear. Um, so that's, um, that's what you can use there. It says thickness. But it's uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be um, it's going to be pulled in the length direction for the specific product. And miscellaneous is there. So I I on many on many uh, projects I have used this. Um, some of my clients have used um, also um, this uh, this company uh, Steiner Martin. Uh, uh, stem ink uh, successfully uh, both with discs rings and plates uh, and I do recommend uh, them as a prototyping source uh, and I also have seen uh, some success in, in, in particular instances with uh, larger quantities uh, and obviously contact them and, and purchase the products to test um, with any piezo ceramic supplier um, you do need to be in charge the client or the customer needs to be in charge of the quality of what they receive so that you need to measure know how to measure your ceramics um, know what it should do in application many times um, manufacturers of the ceramics are blamed for the device not working or changing in performance um, whereas I, I do believe in those instances it is um, it is having a realistic understanding of what these ceramics do as well as what actually goes wrong and changes in devices can actually be very um can, there's many there's many things that can go wrong uh, ceramics and having different qualities of ceramics uh is only one of them and that can actually be tested before uh you implement your devices so you should have some type of quality control uh in order to ensure your success so that was my kind of rundown of the um of the of the website uh, of of purchasing, so I recommend uh, I recommend them for prototyping, uh, and, and I think they'd also be um, uh, you know depending on your price and your relationship and what you've been receiving from the company. I think I would also uh, say to go ahead. Uh, they've been in business for quite a while, 
uh, and I have um, have seen a good amount of success in different projects with with their uh, with their products. So my name is Hussein Shakani from Ultrasonic Advisors. Um, I hope you enjoyed my rundown of the of their of Stemming's website, and I hope that uh, it will serve you well. This kind of review of their products and how to choose a product, uh, how to choose a piezo ceramic. Um, this guide will will serve you well in that process. Uh, so. I look forward to seeing you in my future videos, uh, webinars, and potentially working with you. Uh, I'm an ultrasonic transducer simulation consultant. I also advise on general uh, product development of ultrasonic transducers. So uh, feel free to reach out if you need help in that area, or if you need help specifically with piezo ceramic selection and device design. Take care.